the pi molecular orbitals for 135 hexatrine, what we're going to talk about here. And uh, again, in the last two lessons, we've already talked about the pi molecular orbitals for both ethylene and 1,3-butadiene, and then for the allyl system, the allyl cation, radical, and anion in the last lesson. So now we're ready to move on to the most complex molecular orbital diagram we're going to look at for the, the conjugated pi systems here for 135 hexatrine. And Again, here's our conjugated system. Uh, again, one single uh, sigma bond in between the pi bonds in two locations here. All three pi bonds are conjugated with each other, and you're gonna have one, two, three, four, five, six atoms with overlapping p orbitals. And because there's six atoms with overlapping p orbitals, there's gonna be six molecular orbitals. And also, each of those molecular orbitals is gonna be represented by six overlapping p orbitals, essentially. But once again, they will represent a more complex reality. All right, so before we actually show the diagram, which will be a little bit more of a pain in the butt than the ones we've seen, uh, we can already fill in the electrons, identify the homo, the lumo, things of that sort. So with 135-hexatrine, we've got two, four, six pi electrons. So we'll fill in psi 1, psi 2, and psi 3. So we should also note that the lower half, psi 1, 2, and 3, are bonding. The upper half, psi 4, 5, and 6, are antibonding. And again, we'll designate them with an asterisk. And here we can see that our highest occupied molecular orbital is going to be psi 3, the HOMO, and psi 4 star, the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital, the LUMO. All right. So a couple other things we can see uh, before we actually draw this. That'll, and again, the useful drawing tool here is going to be identifying the number of nodes each of these has before we actually go. And again, specifically the number of vertical nodes. And as we've mentioned in the previous videos, your lowest energy molecular orbital always has zero. And every time you go up in energy, you're going to get a new vertical node. So one for psi two, two for psi three, three for psi four star, four for psi five star, and five for psi six star. All right, so now that we've identified the number of nodes, we've got some lovely diagrams to draw. And this is going to be a pain. And again, your lowest energy one and your highest energy one, those are the easy ones. We'll start there. For psi one, once again, Everything's in phase. Your orbitals are going to match all the way across. One big smear of electron density. Cool, and that's why there's zero vertical nodes. So equally easy, if you know the pattern, is the highest energy orbital on your diagram, where they just alternate all the way across. All right, only by alternating all the way across do you end up getting the five nodes that you need. All right, and so here's where the trouble begins, is these ones in the middle, how do we draw them? Well, psi two needs to have one node, and as we discussed in the last lesson, if you only have one node, again, these nodes have to be symmetrically distributed on the diagram, so if you only have one node, it has to be right in the middle. And so if that's the case right there, right in the middle, then again, when you don't cross a node, your wave functions match. They're in phase. But when you cross a node, you alternate. They're out of phase. So there's the MO picture for Psi 2. Now for Psi 3, we've got two nodes. And we learned a little trick for two nodes. When you've got two nodes, you want to cover up half your diagram and then cut the remaining half in half again. And so once again, if you were just cutting in half between this orbital and this orbital, it'd be right on this orbital and to cancel it out. But it's not between this orbital and this orbital. It's between this orbital and the very middle, which is going to make it appear just to the left of that orbital there. So we'll have the same thing on the other side for those two nodes to be symmetrically distributed. And once again, when you don't cross a node, your wave functions are in phase. When you do cross a node, they're out of phase. All right, and there we go. Now for Psi 3, I'm sorry, for Psi 4 star and Psi 5 star, which have three and four nodes respectively, now your life is not gonna be so fun. Now, one thing to note, when you have an odd number of nodes, you're always going to have one right down the middle. 
So I'm gonna have one right down the middle, just like we did here with one node. So always gonna be true, and just like we did up here with five nodes. So when you've odd number nodes, you have to put one in the middle if they're gonna be symmetrically distributed. The question then becomes, where do you put the other two? And what I'm gonna recommend is just kind of memorize this one. So your groupings are gonna be one, two, two, and one, and you're gonna end up with another node right here and right here, it turns out. It's not the most intuitive thing. So if you look at the spacing, it's not exactly halfway in between. It's actually closer to this one. And you kind of see like a wavelength going through is kind of the way it depicts. That's not really helpful for me personally. So if it helps you, fantastic. It was never really all that helpful for me. Uh, at the end of the day, I just like memorizing the grouping here. One, two, two, one. Whoop. And when you cross out of phase, all right, almost messed that up. All right, and there's Psi 4 star. And then finally, Psi 5 star. Uh, fun as well, and once again, I highly recommend you remember the groupings, and it's gonna be one, one, two, one, one. So we're gonna have a node here, a node here, a node here, and a node here. And these nodes aren't exactly halfway in between these orbitals. Uh, if it were, then this wouldn't be equal spacing and stuff like that. So, but it turns out they're where they need to be to get equal spacing. So you're gonna find that these two would be actually closer in and stuff like that. So in the end though, it doesn't matter because you don't actually have to draw these dashed lines for the nodes. That's just a helpful tool for us, not actually technically part of the diagram. So, but with our grouping here being one, one, two, one, one, we can draw that in. Cool, and there's Psi 5 star. And now we've drawn all the molecular orbitals for 135 hexatrine. And once again, I do wanna remind you that when you look at these, you should see that the uh, lowest energy one in every odd numbered, so Psi 1, Psi 3, Psi 5, they are all symmetrical. The left-hand side's the perfect mirror image of the right hand side so symmetric 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 so and then every other one your left hand side is the exact opposite of the mirror image of the right hand side and they're anti-symmetric and again we brought that up earlier i just want to reinforce that again because again when we get to pericyclic reactions this will be helpful to us for some of them now, once again, just a reminder that we've got six molecular orbitals here, and though we draw them as being comprised of six overlapping p orbitals, keep in mind that these all represent a more complex reality. And I'll make sure it's on. If, you're, if you've got the study guide next, you'll see that I drew uh, our representations right next to the actual realities, a little further off to the right. I will make sure to put those up on the screen here for those of you that don't have the study guide in front of you, uh, so that you can see the reality that these actually represent. Now, if you've benefited from this lesson, would you consider giving me a like and a share? Uh, pretty much the two most important things you can do to help other students find this lesson as well. If you're looking for the study guide that goes with this lesson, if you are looking for practice problems or a practice final exams or uh, final exam rapid review for your OCHEM class, check out my premium course on chatsprep.com. A free trial is available.